everybody, yes, YouTube have yielded and we are yay close to finishing our alphabetizing of the WWE Universe. My name is Tom Campbell and this is the letter Y on the A to Z of WWE. Y is for your fire. Get it from the back of the throat, push it out through the top of the mouth and all the way beyond your teeth and into the face of somebody that you don't want to see at your office anymore. Vince McMahon's guttural catchphrase, which has been uttered since the 90s. He loves going to the back of his jowls and sacking somebody in the middle of the WWE ring. Vince loves a public firing, be it Stone Cold Steve Austin for not doing his job as guest referee at Judgment Day 1998, be it Eric Bischoff for failing to run Monday Night Raw to his standards and therefore not just firing him, but throwing him in a garbage truck. He's even fired Donald Trump on a 2009 episode of Monday Night Raw after Donald Trump sold the WWE Raw program back to Vince McMahon. Vince couldn't help but get Give it a big old, you're fired! All the McMahons have had a go at this point. Shane, Stephanie, even Linda's done at least one. In fact, every authority pretty much has had a go at a public sacking with a back of the throat shout at the end of it. In fact, even a TV show has used it as a catchphrase. I'm looking at you, The Apprentice. But nobody does it quite like Vince McMahon. You're fired! From fire to bonsai! Why is for Yokozuna. When Rodney Anawaihi joined WWF, the plan was going to be he was going to be the third member of the Head Shrinkers with Fatu and Samu. Yet then the idea came forward of what if instead of making him a Head Shrinker, what if we make him a Japanese sumo wrestler? Yeah, that's what we'll do. Yokozuna debuted in late 1992 and went on a dominant streak. He was the WWF champion by WrestleMania just a few months later. A belt that he lost just a few seconds later to Hulk Hogan. But they, they fixed that at King of the Ring 1993 when Yokozuna ended Hulkamania forever and became the WWF champion in the process. Yokozuna would be a dominant WWF champion until WrestleMania 10, turning back challenges from the likes of Lex Luger and The Undertaker before falling to Bret the Hitman Hart in the main event at Madison Square Garden. He would go on to finish off some unfinished business with The Undertaker that would see him lying in a casket at the very end of their rivalry. Yokozuna's weight was a great problem. He was almost 700 pounds when WWF released him in the late 90s, and he never passed a medical to get back into a WWE ring either. Rodney Anawaihi passed away in 2000 whilst on a European independent tour. He was put into the WWE Hall of Fame by family members, the Usos and Rikishi. If you were a wrestling fan in the 90s, you will remember Yokozuna. He had a striking presence every time he got into the ring. He was a dominant WWF champion as well for well over a year. Let's mix it up with a move. Y is for Yakuza Kick. The name comes from Masachono in Japan. Now, this is basically a running big boot. You know the big boot that Hulk Hogan does in the setup to the leg drop? Well, if you were to run at the opponent and do one of them, you've basically done a Yakuza kick. Now, the, the name varies depending on where you are in the world. Uh, in some parts of America, it's called a Mafia kick. In some parts of the UK, it's called a Hooligan kick. Uh, Sami Zayn does a version called the Huluva kick. But basically, if you can do a big boot, you could probably do a Yakuza kick as well. Why is for Yamaguchi, the man who founded Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling and Mishinoku Pro Wrestling, actually had a run in the WWF in 1998. He set up the formidable Japanese faction known as Kayentai. Men's Teo, Dick Togo, Shofunaki, and later adding Taka Mishinoku to their numbers. One of the most memorable moments from Yamaguchi-san's run in WWF was the time that Val Venus slept with his wife. That tended to be how Val Venus got into feuds with people. He got into the beds with their wives, and that happened here, leading to an infamous moment where Val Venus nearly got his... nearly... nearly, nearly lost his job as an adult entertainer. Let's put it that way. Nearly got it chop, choppied off, led by Yamaguchi-san. 
Wally Yamaguchi passed away in 2019. His legacy in WWF is nowhere near as great as the legacy that he has left the Japanese wrestling scene. However, the Yamaguchi name does live on in WWE as his brother Shun is a Japanese commentator for WWE pay-per-views. You probably see him sometimes when they do commentators row, when they scan down that, that, that whole row of 400 different commentators. He's there, he's there. From a Japanese legend to a Japanese buzzsaw, why is for Yoshihiro Tajiri. Now, Tajiri actually had a very brief run in the WWF in 1997 when they were beginning the light heavyweight division. He popped up from time to time to have matches with Takami Shinoku and Brian Christopher. But he would go away to work in ECW where he would where he would really sort of find his niche as a character performer and in 2001 he would return to the WWF as William Regal's assistant. He competed on the WWF side during the invasion in 2001 even picking up the WCW Cruiserweight title in the process. He would hold the WWE version of the Cruiserweight title multiple times after this as well. He'd also become a multi-time WWE tag team champion alongside William Regal and Eddie Guerrero before he left the WWE in 2005. He wanted to spend more time back home in Japan with his family. So he said, oh, thanks very much for all this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna head over that way. He'd make sporadic returns to the WWE. He was part of both One Night Stand ECW reunion shows. He was also part of the Cruiserweight Classic, the inaugural one. And he's popped up on a few episodes of NXT and 205 Live, showing there's still a lot of love in the WWE universe for the Japanese buzzsaw. We're gonna go back Back in time to May of 1978 for our next why, the Yukon Lumberjacks. Captain Lou Albano wanted a tag team to take to the tippity top of the tag division. Enter Eric and Pierre, the Yukon Lumberjacks. An imposing tandem with big mountain beards and big mountain shoulders. Pierre and Eric would win the WWWF Tag Team Championships in almost record time. They would turn back challenges from Dino Bravo and Dominic Danucci, ST Jones and Gorilla Monsoon, and Chief J Strongbow and Larry Zabisco. They'd lose those belts to Zabisco and Tony Gurria before the year was out, and they ended up falling out and parting ways anyway. It was a short but passionate affair for the Yukon Lumberjacks. And why is for you can't see me, the eternal catchphrase, of one John Cena. I'm gonna do this for the entire entry. Now I'm not, my hand hurts. Like all great catchphrases, it started out as a bit of an in-joke. This is when John Cena was trying to get a foothold in the WWE in 2002, during the Ruthless Aggression era. And uh, his brothers and him were one day just riffing, they were coming up with some stuff for a rap album that John Cena was working on. And his brother started doing this dance doing all this nonsense. And he challenged John Cena to try and get that in on WWE TV somehow. So John Cena was like, all right, yeah, you're on. I'll do it. Uh, hence, You Can't See Me not only was a bet that John Cena won with his brother, but it actually became a massive part of John Cena's character to the point where even doing that is a meme unto itself. You can't see me. My only concern is that John Cena's brother maybe should have put a copyright on that before the bet was completed. I feel like the John Cena family could have had a lot more money from somebody just doing that than they actually had. So that's why on the A to Z of WWE, the final letter is tomorrow. And I promise we're gonna end on the Muppets. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section down below. You can support us on Patreon by going to patreon.com forward slash cultaholic. Lastly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.